Hey, welcome to the uh, Tato Live Show, Teaching and Developing Online. I just want to uh, today talk a little bit about what's come through my Twitter stream today <clears throat> and what news I have for you people as I explore what the news of the day is. I think you'll be interested to see that today we're going to talk about what's the purpose of the schools in the 21st century which is one of the, the things that was sent to me. 21st century learning and leading. It's education, but not as we know it, was another article. It's not about the gadgets, why every teacher should have integrated technology into their classroom, which is probably the one I'll speak the most about. How the internet is changing education. Imagine the future of universities. And those will be the articles that I will touch on today. I think you'll uh, you'll find that the one that I will speak the most about has to do with um, how the internet's changing education and the integration of technology into the classroom. One of the clarifications that I think everyone needs to make when we talk about the integration of technology in the classroom has to do with not doing your lesson the old style where you stand in front of 30 students and you stand up at the front and you do your lecture and at the end then you use some form of technology that okay now let's go on the internet and look that up okay let's uh, watch a video that will explain what I just explained in a different way um, what they talk about when they're using uh, technology in the classroom you have to actually infuse it um, it becomes part of the lesson. It's not something that you have to spend a lot of time explaining, which means if you spend a lot of time standing in front of the class and explaining how to use the technology, then your lesson becomes more about the technology and less about what is actually being taught. So the idea is that because our students are coming to school and are used to using the technology in their life, we have to um, to try and bring it into the classroom to engage the student a little bit more. So um, at the moment what we perceive technology use in the classroom is things like a smart board. If we have students come up and uh, click on the smart board, every student maybe gets to click on the student on the smart board once in a day or the smart board is used where we use the uh, our lessons are being projected up onto the smart board and we consider that to be the integration of technology into our lessons and we're running into a problem or because we force our students to uh, type all the essays that they're going to hand in, um, we consider that to be uh, integration of technology and that's not necessarily so. All our students, BYOD, is a big term that is being used and there's been a lot of articles that have come across our desk in the last little while that talks about how if we allow the students to bring their own technology to the classroom it's going to be much easier for us to integrate technology because the students will know how to use their own technology and so when when I'm sitting in a lecture hall if I have an, a Wi-Fi connection I find the lecture to be much more interesting because I can test the theories and test the websites and go to the different things on the websites to get the answers to the questions that that person who is in front of me is challenging me with. So if I have a, a person at the front of the classroom and they're challenging me with all sorts of different things and they're talking about this theory or that theory and I can actually go look at the theory and as he's speaking get some other feedback that comes from another path or another stream, I find that adds a lot to my lecture or to that person's lecture. If we have a back channel running in the back of a lecture hall where the, t the students can talk to each other in an educational way about what is being said at the front um, I find that to be very engaging as well so as this person is sitting at the front and they're talking and that you can engage with the other people in the classroom without interrupting the actual lecture I can find that very um, exciting and then if you take it one step farther than that where you can actually engage people who are not even in the classroom. They're the people who are out in the World Wide Web and out in different countries or in different locations and they bring questions to that lecture. I find that adds a lot of uh, 
potential engagement to a lesson because you can actually bring in experts into the classroom um, and I think that's kind of cool. I also think and because of what's said in this, les les in this lesson I've done a few different videos that people have found very interesting like you can't be my teacher was one where if you are not um, going to in, in engage the students with technology in your classroom then I don't want you to be my son's teacher. I think um, we have allowed teachers to have the choice in the past and I think we're getting closer and closer to a time in education where the teachers are going to have less choice and that that label that we give teachers, oh that's, that teacher's right into technology so when you take a, a lesson from them you're going to see a lot of technology happen in their classroom and you're going to be engaged through technology and all that stuff. I don't think that that will become the norm rather than the exception or has to become because in the future I think the educational system is going to force us to go down that path and so I think that it's going to be an exciting time in the next little while as that becomes a possibility. So let's go on to one of the other articles that uh, that came up. It's asked how the internet is changing education. The one uh, statement that I found very engaging and very interesting was the statement that I heard on the internet when I was listening to someone speak on a, on a webcast where he said the moment it was possible for someone to get the answer to a question on their phone it became less important for us as teachers to actually tell the students the facts. So if uh, if I was asking the students what's the capital of Florida and they could find the answer to that on their phone or their phone within 10 seconds can give them the answer, why is that important for that student to memorize that information or to have that, that information in their head rather than having a method of just being able to find it. So as the internet comes out and we get more and more um, engaged with the internet in the educational field, is it going to change the way we approach things? This this article I think you'll find very interesting and is worth a read because it talks about um, how many online courses students are taking because that's a direct impact obviously. It talks about Wikipedia and how Wikipedia has affected the way people look at the online encyclopedia and how uh, the mass can, the mass group of people can come up with um, facts and figures that will be fairly accurate. Um, how much, the another, like because I use an infograph, there's also a little picture that explains that 8 out of 10 um, faculty report using online videos in their classroom. Um, YouTube has become an awesome tool in my own life if there's anything that I'm doing that I need to repair or there's something I need to fix in the, uh, in my home, washing machine, dryer, uh, car carburetor or something along that lines. I don't even try to find the manual for them anymore. I automatically go onto YouTube and ask the question. When I decided I wanted to tile my bathroom for instance, I went and um, called up how to tile and uh, watched about 18 different videos on how to tile and then took a stab at it and found out that that answered my question on how to do the tiling. The, uh, the next article that I want to talk about has to do with uh, imagine the future of universities. Um, I don't even want to take a stab at this one. I think it's a neat article to read. I don't think there is a, um, a clear cut case on how this is going to work. I think the universities of old that happened for the 17 to 22 year olds and happened right after high school ha are starting to be watered down with the lifelong learners and the number of different adults who have gone back to education to retrain themselves for their next career and to um, just to find out some information about an area that they're interested in and becomes more of a training facility for those type of people I think is uh, is what the future of the universities are going to look like, but I wouldn't put my name on it and say this is the way I think it's going to go yet. I'm still not sure. 21st century learning and leading. This this term, 21st, the reason why I put both of these up there, there's two different articles that talk what's the purpose of the schools in the 21st century. Um, 21st century learning is a catchphrase that's being used by a lot of different people. I'm not too sure. I'm thrilled with that term at all, but uh, I, both those articles are worth a, a glance at, so if you get a chance, I would take a minute and uh, take a read. Anyways, that's my broadcast for today. I'll uh, talk to you.